Okay, so, so far what we talked about is the second part of the statement of cash flows. So if we move that $50,000 here, you see upper part operating income, and then you have operating cash flows. This part here, you have long-term assets cash flows. You receive cash, $50,000, number book value plus 10,000 gain. And then 310,000 acquisition, the problem in the textbook, if you read the example, it directly gave you this number. Okay, so if you know for a fact the problem gives you this, just subtract 310,000. That's the cash the company used up to purchase long-term asset. Okay, for financing activities, the last part here, all of these relates to either issuing stock, which is gaining cash, or buying back stock, treasury stock, losing cash, or signing off long-term notes, borrowing money, gaining cash again, or paying off long-term notes, you'll be losing cash if you pay off liability, uh, or payment of dividends, losing cash. So this section relatively is more straightforward too because any plus and minus doesn't have opposite defects compared to operating activities. Basically, any payments you subtracted, any cash received you added. Okay, only the first section, operating income, we're moving backwards from net income. All the other section, if the problem tells you that a company paid liability, then definitely reduce cash. If they sign off long-term notes, borrow money, then increase cash. Okay, if they issue stock, also increase cash buy back the stock, loses cash. First example, if we look at long-term notes payable, does long-term notes payable increase or decrease here compared to two years? Well, if last year is 2013, this year is 2014, what happened to the balance? We had an increase in liability for the $80,000, right? So what does that $80,000 mean? Did we pay it off or did we borrow more? We borrow more. If it, liability account, if it increased, that basically means that's the net effect of borrowing and paying, but overall the effect is we borrow more than what we paid. Okay, so that 80